Team Gamer here, and happy Halloween, everyone! I hope you guys are enjoying your Halloween night, or, well, Halloween morning or afternoon, or whenever you watch this video, I guess. But, uh, well, uh, to celebrate Halloween, uh, why not make a top 10 list? Yay! Uh, what's scarier than making a top 10 list and not agreeing with it or somewhat agreeing with it? Yeah, um, well... Yeah, we're just gonna make a top 10 list. So, uh, well, without any further ado, um, enough stalling, we have to, uh, get this started. So, uh, well, welcome to Let's Say, where instead of playing the game, I actually talk about it. And in this episode of Let's Say, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 agents in ZZZ version 1.2. Yep, we're, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 agents. So, uh, well... Uh, to get things started, we're gonna be doing things much differently, and I mean much, 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 much differently. Um, you'll, you'll know what I mean once I talk about the rules. So, uh, let's, um, let's just lay down some ground rules before we get started, so. Well, let's do it. So, number one. Well, this list is not going to be vacuum-based. What I mean by that is... Um, agents will not share the same spot anymore. That's because, well, I want it to be more of a discussion video than more of like a, uh, well, unbiased list. So yeah, um, this is going to be my personal, basically, uh, top 10 list, um, in the ranking each individual agent. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I just wanted to further narrow it down to just one agent per slot. So that's the reason why I'm doing it. And also, uh, well, the video is going to be like three hours long if I do do it in groups. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so might as well just keep the video as short as possible, I guess. So yeah. Uh, rule number two, uh, all agents right here are basically judged by the same criteria and judged by a unbiased. Um, what I mean by that is basically... Well, I, I guess I can just uh, lay down the sub rules. Number one, all S rank agents are considered to be M zero, so Mindscape Cinema zero. If we judge them based off of M six, then yeah, they're obviously going to be the best agents in the game, no doubt about it. Not even the A rank characters are going to be close. So yeah, uh, rule number two or sub rule number two, all A rank agents are going to be considered M six. That is because you pull them multiple times in the banner, so eventually they will reach M six. So yeah, um, probably um, by the time you're watching this video, you probably will have at least one A uh, rank agent M6. So yeah, um, as for uh, A ranks, they are M6, uh, just to be fair, basically. So yeah. Sub rule number three, all agents are considered to have their best possible scenario and kit. What I mean by that is all of them will basically have uh, maxed out skills uh, maxed out core um, That is what we're gonna be judging them by we're gonna be judging them by uh, their best kits in certain scenarios so um, Well, what I mean by that is uh, Well, let's say Kaleida right here Kaleida will have a four-piece shock star disco that is her best set So uh, we're gonna be judging her based off she, uh, when she has shock star disco um, we also have Jane right here. We're going to be judging her based off of four-piece fanged metal. So yeah, um, you see what I mean? Uh, just assume that all agents have their best disc set um, as well. Um, also, for W engines of choice, all agents are considered to have the bare minimum W engine because there are certain W engines in the game that are super, super busted. Um, I'm talking to you, Automaton, um, that is basically just game breaking. So yeah, um, we're not gonna be judging um, them based off of W engine as well. We're gonna be basically giving them the bare minimum W engine, which is just like an A rank W engine without their personal W engine. So yeah, um, that is one of the criteria as well. And um, that's pretty much it for all the uh, sub uh, criteria. Um, I guess I can just lay down one more sub rule. I guess, uh, sub rule number four, consider that all of the agents have their best stats. So basically, level 60 with the recommended stats. So for, in this case, Jane right here will probably have, like, high AP. For Lucy, she's probably going to have high attack. Um, we can give another, I guess, one more example. We have Sokaku, who has high attack. So yeah, um, just consider everyone having their best possible stats. 
Um, so yeah, uh, to basically become um, unbiased and treat everyone fairly. So yeah. And well, I guess now we can move on to um, the other rules. So another rule that we're going to be using right here is that, um, well, we are also going to be judging them based off of teams. Yes, teams. So basically um, what their team options are, um, how well they are in teams, how well they slot in teams, that is considered as well. So um, basically uh, how they do in teams, um, how like, um, well, how they basically slot in teams. Yeah, th there's really nothing for me to say uh, except repeat myself because that is literally um, what it is. It's just how well they work in teams and how well they slot in them. So yeah. And as for the final rule, um, last but not least, and the most important rule, this is just my opinion. Yeah, this is just my opinion. So if you have a problem with my list or if you want to uh, make your own list or if you want to... Um, well, change a couple things about my list. Um, I will leave a link in the description down below to the tier list um, that I use. So you guys can make your own tier list and maybe share it with me. Uh, who knows? Um, you can also go in the comment section down below and just talk about it as well. Um, where would you rank these agents uh, if you do uh, do a top 10 list? So yeah. Well, anyways, that is it for the rules. So now we can finally go into the top 10 itself. So... Um, well, let's just get started. So at number 10, we're going to be talking about the honorable mentions. I'm not going to be pulling up the characters right here. And that's because it's just the honorable mentions. So I can't just go over these quickly for you guys and give you the Sparks Notes version of these agents. So on the honorable mentions, um, basically these are the agents that can't make the cut to the, uh, basically the top nine. We have Grace, Howard, we have Soldier, Eleven. And then lastly, we have Kaleida Bellabog. So these three agents are really, really, really good, but they don't make the cut. <laughs> um, that is because, well, uh, you'll probably see in a moment right here, but um, number nine through zero is like, honestly, like they're all used in teams. Yeah, they're all used in teams. They are basically must slots in teams. Um, for these agents, not so much, except for maybe... Um, 11 and Kaleida, uh, but uh, as for Grace, um, well, I guess we could just talk about her first. So what makes Grace really good is that is because she is an electric anomaly agent. She's one of the only few electric anomaly agents in the game and also a really great applicator for shock. Um, she is pretty great on that. Um, she can apply a consistent shock, which is pretty great on anomaly teams, which is the meta of this game currently as of version 1.2. Um, but you probably might not see Grace ever again because a certain pink haired glasses girl from section six is going to be coming out. So yeah, but um, well, as at least for now in version 1.2, Grace is pretty, pretty good. Um, as I said before, great shock applier, great um, sub uh, DPS support hybrid. Um, yeah, she's extremely, extremely good, especially if she is paired with double anomaly or if she's on her own team um, with the Bellabog Industries. Because we have Anton right here, who is a, a shock DPS. So, uh, well, who is great at applying shock? Grace. So yeah, that's basically it. Soldier 11. Uh, Soldier 11 has been in the rise. Um, she is now becoming an extremely, and I mean, an extremely, extremely great agent. She is the only fire attack agent in the game. And um, thanks to a certain... Uh, Shielder um, from the Sons of Caledon. Uh, Soldier 11 has become extremely, and I mean extremely, extremely good. Um, not only just uh, Caesar, but uh, she also uh, has a resurgence thanks to all of the other things that she's able to do. So, um, well, as for 11, 11 basically has kind of no teams because her additional ability condition is literally just fire and her own squad, Obel squad. But guess what? There's no Obel squad units. So uh, she only has to rely on fire, but thankfully she can link up with other agents pretty, pretty easily. So for uh, 11, she has access to Caesar and Ching Yi besides your fire agents. Uh, Ching Yi can basically sync up with attack 
pretty great for stun because, well, you know how good stun agents are in this game. Uh, Ching Yi can basically debuff the enemy and then Eleven goes to town. You have Caesar right here who can protect Eleven as well. Um, she also will buff the damage because of the proto uh, four piece set. So it's pretty, pretty great for her as well. Uh, as you see, Soldier Eleven pretty much has really, really great options. Um, as for support, she has Lucy. Lucy is pretty great as well. So yeah, um, pretty, pretty awesome for uh, Soldier 11. But yeah, Soldier 11 has pretty, pretty strong options for the most part. The only reason why she's not higher on the list is because, well, that additional ability, it, it kind of sucks. There's no one in Obel Squad um, compared to the other agents on the list that basically have somewhat pretty good teams, um, except for maybe one other um, agent right here uh, in the game. But she is too uh, good and I will talk about it soon. So yeah, but um, that's basically uh, Eleven. She has pretty great options. Uh, for the fire spectrum, she has Kaleida, Lucy, Bernice, and then for the other spectrum, she has Chingy, Caesar, etc., etc. And then you you can basically just uh, link up with her with basically anyone, and she's pretty pretty great. So yeah. And as for the final character um, or agent on the honorable mentions, we have Kaleida. Kaleida is uh, the only fire stun agent in the game, at least of 1.2, before uh, a certain sunglasses guy from the Sons of Caledon will release. So yeah. But as for Kaleida, um, Kaleida is pretty, pretty good. All of her stun comes from her uh, basics, which is pretty, pretty strong. It's all, it's all really, 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 really busted. Um, Thanks to just, uh, all she has to do is literally just pump out EX and that's it. All, all of her normals become, um, really, really damaging days attacks. So yeah. Um, Kaleida has pretty great options to sync up as well. Um, as I mentioned before, she can sync up with Eleven. It's basically Eleven's, um, best partner. Um, she can sync up with Bernice. She can sync up with Lucy. Um, she can also sync up with her, uh, fellow, um, Balabak Industries, um, agents like, uh, her big sis, um, Grace, she has Anton, she has Ben, um, you could do Ben Enhanced Normals, but she doesn't really need that to be good, so yeah, um, but Kaleida can also sync up with others like Caesar, she is a defensive parry assist, so it's pretty great for her, um, which, uh, can also combo into other stuff as well, like, uh, Bernice, um, which is pretty, pretty great. So yeah, you can basically make a lot of teams with Kaleida and most of them are pretty, pretty good, um, as I said before. So yeah, um, all of these three basically just have really, really good team options and they're pretty, pretty strong. It's just that um, compared to the other top 10 or at least top nine in this case right here, um, well, they're not really as great as those so anyways um enough about me um talking about the honorable mentions that is it for that segment so now it's time to actually talk about the top 10 so um well i just discussed about what the honorable mentions are and here are your top nine i guess agents in the game so at number nine eight and seven yes i am doing these in order because they're literally the same agent and they all uh, are basically close to each other. Um, I forgot to mention, all of these agents are basically close to each other. They're all really, really, really viable. Um, so yeah, um, literally the placing could be swapped or somewhat swapped with any other agent. So yeah. Well, anyways, at number nine, we have the um, Sons of Caledon, um, well, document expert, as well as one of the members, Lucy. Um, we also have, at number 8, we have the leader of the, uh, Cunning Hairs, Nicole Damara. And then at number 7, we have the food-loving Oni of Section 6, Sokaku. Yes, these three, I have to rank them right now, because they, all three of them, literally are the same thing. You wanna know what they are? Well, let me transition right now. So what are they? They are free to play. They're free to play. They're literally free to play. Nicole, you get her for literally just playing the game. For Sokaku, all you have to do is finish um, Hollow Zero. And then for Lucy, all you have to do is do the event right now currently in version 1.2, which is a uh, Cheesetopia. Yeah, all three of these agents are free to play agents. And what makes them so good is that they offer buffs to party members. Yeah. 
Uh, they are extremely, extremely, extremely good. And these support agents are the only support agents that you'll see on the list. And that is because it's just how good they are. Um, besides a certain um, other shield agent, but we will get to that soon. So yeah. But, um, uh, well, I guess we could just talk about Lucy first. So what, Lu what makes Lucy so good? Uh, what makes Lucy so good is that her, uh, well, core is really busted. So, um, she has attack impact, um, AP on cheer on with, uh, guard wars. Guard wars are her main mechanic, um, but you don't really use her for guard wars. You use her for cheer on. Cheer on is what makes Lucy so busted. It's super, super busted. So, what does Lucy do? She literally gives 600 attack to party members. Yep, for free. Um, it is spread across the entire party. She gets it herself. Literally 600 to everyone. It's not a, by an individual person. It's not by an individual agent. Nope. You literally just get 600 for free for all party members. And that is all you need to know. Yep, that's it. That's what makes Lucy so good. So, yeah. Um, she has extremely, extremely good damage on guard boards as well, especially if you are going for the crit recrit crit damage thanks to her additional ability. By the way, you don't need this, by the way, uh, if you want Lucy to be good. Literally, all she needs is cheer on and that's it. That's what makes Lucy so busted. It's because you don't need additional, unlike the other agents in the game. Um, she also has a bunch of other uh, really unique things as well to her. Um, as for her uh, Mindscape Cinema right here, uh, this is one of her unique things. If you have a character that can basically do multi-hit EXs, like Piper, or uh, Sokaku, or Bernice, you are basically able to do big guard board damage, which is pretty nice. And also, you can refresh the Cheer On effect, meaning that your Cheer On is infinite. She also has other things going on for her too, like um, she gives crit damage to all party members on her M6. Or on her M4, uh, sorry. Um, for M2, she gets um, increased cheer on for 10 seconds. And then for M1, I'm pretty sure she gives, yeah. Um, she gives two energy, which is pretty, pretty great. Means that she's able to do her EXs more. Um, she also has a level up stat of uh, energy regen, meaning that you are able to just do cheer on multiple times, especially since um, you're going to be getting EXs a lot, which means that she's going to be doing a bunch of damage on her EXs. So yeah, um, overall, Lucy is just pretty great. Um, she doesn't really have any weaknesses either. Um, literally... Her additional is really easy. You just have to do attribute or faction, and it's just fire, literally fire, and Sons of Caladon, which are pretty, pretty stacked overall. So yeah, um, Lucy is extremely, extremely busted on that part. So that is the reason why she is at number nine. She's just really, really good. No flaws, literally no flaws. I guess the only flaw I could uh, say is that she's not as good as number eight. Yeah. Um, that's the only flaw I could give her. So, uh, number eight, Nicole Damara. So, uh, what makes Nicole really good? Uh, well, she has, uh, one thing that, uh, Lucy doesn't have. She has crowd control. Yeah, crowd control. Crowd control is extremely important in ZZZ, especially since you are going to be fighting, um, enemies in the floors that literally have a bunch of them. Yeah, literally, like, scattered across. Guess what Nicole does? She gathers them up in one spot, meaning that you're able to deal with them easily. That is literally really, really busted, especially since in, um, Shiyu defense, you literally have to, uh, basically not waste any time. Guess what, uh, Nicole does? She doesn't waste time for you. So, yeah, it's extremely, extremely, extremely busted. Um, not only that, uh, she, uh, is basically pretty great on the, uh, quick swap style because she reduces defense, especially, uh, since you are gonna be just doing this a lot. Um, all you have to do is literally just do a basic or dash attack and you get 40% defense reduction for 3.5 seconds. That is great for characters that especially combo with her. Like, um, well, in this case, the main character, Shuyun. Shuyun combos really well with Nicole, especially since, um, they both are quick swap characters, so it's pretty, pretty great. Um, she also has her additional. She doesn't need it either. It's just similar to basically just, um, Lucy, where she doesn't really need the additional to be good. And that's because all it does is just give 25% more ether damage. If, um, there's characters that can utilize it, like, uh, Shuyun, it's extremely great, but... 
again, as I said before, she's a neat additional to be really, really good. Especially since um, she has one or two things that she's just going to be doing a lot. One, she's just, she's just going to be doing defense reduction. Um, two, she's going to be crowd controlling with either EX or Chain. Yes, Chain literally does the same thing as EX. It's extremely, extremely busted. Also, since the anomaly buildup is insane, you can literally stack up AP on her and become god mode. Yep, that's it. Um, she's extremely, extremely, extremely busted. Um, and also the cherry on top, her core level up is literally energy regen, meaning that if you have this maxed out, you could literally spam it. You could spam EX all you want. Free EXs everywhere. So yeah, um, really nothing for me to say there except that Nicole is just busted. So yeah, um, as for the uh, number seven spot, we have Sokaku. Yes, um, the Oni Sokaku. So similar to um, Nicole, uh, Sokaku will basically buff the uh, party, similar to, I guess, uh, Lucy, in a way. Um, as for Sokaku, her buff is basically unique. She basically gives um, attack based off her attack. Yeah, uh, really nothing for me to say there. Um, she can give you a max of 1,000 attack. This, this agent is one of the few agents in the game that literally straight up give you 1,000 attack. Remember when I said that Lucy gives you 600? Yeah, only, she only gives you 600. So Kaku literally gives almost double of 600. Literally gives you 1,000 attack for free. 1,000 attack is busted. It means that you're just going to be doing more and more and more damage. It's just really, really, really busted. So yeah, um, she is better than Nicole in a way. And that is because um, Nicole, you have to do quick swap style. There's no choice. You have to do quick swap style. This means that you have to basically just do one or two attacks um, with your agents before you have to swap to Nicole and then just do enhanced bullets. So she's basically kind of harder to play. As for Sokaku, you can literally have this buff, this um, Vortex buff, for 30 seconds. Especially since you are going to be having her at M, at M6. M6 is going to be your main um, Mindscape Cinema. Uh, but she literally gives a lot of buffs, similar to basically Nicole right here. Um, where Nicole literally gives like buffs like their um, EX. Right here, she gives um, energy. And then for um, M4, she gives right here um, a more field on her EX. It means that she just gets a bigger EX. And then for M6, she literally increases crit rate. Um, it's similar to uh, Sokaku in a way. For uh, Sokaku, her M4 just increase or just decreases Ice Red Shred. For M2, she literally just gives her more Vortex. And then for M1. Um, I'm pretty sure she just gives, yeah, uh, more time on her buff, which is really, really good. And M6 is just a DPS thing, so it doesn't really matter what it is. But, um, it's similar to basically Nicole in a way, where, uh, Sokaku is just going to be a, uh, just a supporter. But, um, what's different about, uh, Sokaku than Nicole, as I said, mentioned before, is that if you have her at M1, she literally has 30 seconds of Fly the Flag. That is busted. It means that you could literally... You don't have to switch her. You don't have to switch her. All you have to do is consume all the Vortex stacks. And you get the 1k for 30 seconds. That's it. That's all you have to do. And it's pretty easy to pass it on. Because once you do do the Fly the Flag move. You can literally just do a quick assist. That's that's how easy it is. Um, she also has pretty, pretty great options too. She has EX. This is really busted. Um, she basically will base, uh, just do a bunch of damage, especially if you have crit, crit, crit damage on her. Um, she is going to be doing extreme damage to the opponent. She also has Ice Anomaly build up on EX. It is a lot, by the way. You are going to be freezing opponents guaranteed, especially if you are landing four of these things. They are really, really busted. She also has Chain. Um, despite it being so slow, um, it actually does do a semi-crowd control effect similar to Nicole right here. Um, but it's not as consistent as Nicole's, so I wouldn't say it's better than Nicole's. But um, it still can just crowd control if you want it to. Um, but yeah. Um, as for uh, Sokaku's weaknesses, I would say um, she doesn't have the same weaknesses as Nicole. Nicole's weakness is literally just you have to just quick swap. Um, for Sokaku, her main weakness, literally, this is her only weakness in my opinion, 
She's slow as crap. She's so slow. Um, compared to the other agents, um, that are supports, so... Nicole. Nicole is fast. She's really, really, really fast. Um, especially since she is going to be in the quick swap cell. Literally, one normal attack will take you, like, 0.5 seconds. That's it. That's all you gotta do. And then you have the rest of the 3 seconds to yourself for the, uh, defense reduction. She also will be on and off field really quickly because all you need to do is launch EX. You don't even need to charge it, by the way. Um, but yeah, you can literally just launch EX, launch chain, that's it. Um, she could just get out of your hair. Same with Lucy, you don't even need to charge the boars, you can literally just tap it. Um, her chain is also pretty quick too, all you have to do is tap it as well. Um, and, uh, of course, you can't just, uh, leave off field when you are at, um, cheer on, or, because all you have to do is just last for 10 seconds, and especially if you have her at M6. Um, she basically has infinite cheer on, meaning that you don't have to do... Um, her EX anyway. So yeah. But as for Sokaku, it's slow! It's really, really slow! Um, especially, uh, since you are going to be, uh, getting the three Vortex stacks. If you do her Fly the Flag, that move is so slow. It's super, super slow. If you don't believe me, do it right now. It, it's just super, super, super slow. Um, her chain is also pretty slow. Um, sometimes you don't even want to do a chain. You just want to cancel the chain. Um, if you are going to be using Sokaku, um, because you are wasting, um, valuable, and I mean valuable seconds on, um, damage opportunities. So, yeah, uh, Sokaku, Sokaku, despite how great she is, she's just slow. She's just really, really slow compared to her other, uh, supporters. But, the main reason why she topples over the two is that 1k attack. That 1k attack is nothing to scoff at. These two agents right here don't even have that, uh, 600 attack. She has just that uh, defense shred and crowd control. Um, for her, she has crowd control on chain, and she has 1k attack. And she has anomaly uh, ice res buildup. And she has anomaly uh, buildup as well. It's just really, really, really busted. Um, Sokaku. Yeah, th that's all I gotta say. She's really, really really good compared to her others so um well i guess now we can just talk about teams now so um as for teams uh lucy lucy's teams are extremely extremely good as i mentioned before she has um basically a lot of pair ups uh, with her um she could pair up with caesar caesar is really really busted uh well no spoilers but um, i'm gonna say it's just it's just that she's really really busted um she can also pair up with other fire agents like Bernice. Bernice is pretty good in general. She has Piper right here, who is a great anomaly character. Um, she also has other fire agents as well, as I mentioned before. Ben. She has Kaleida. Eleven. Oh yeah, she has a bunch of other agents that she can sync up with, which is pretty, pretty great. Um, she also has access to um, other physical agents like Nekomata. Nekomata is pretty good as well. So yeah, uh, she has other ways to just access agents thanks to her um, syncs with like Caesar um, and as well as uh, other agents like Bernice because she is Anomaly, so you can just sync up with her. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty great overall. So, yeah, which means that you're able to sync up with, uh, ahem, uh, Jane, who is really, really good. Because, um, if you look at her additional, literally, Anomaly, um, Bernice is Anomaly, and she is Fire, so she syncs up with Lucy. So, yeah, uh, she has pretty, pretty great options for teams. So, um, that's the reason why, um, she is where she is. As for Nicole, um, she is basically just kind of, um... Uh, she is kind of, uh, bad, uh, when it comes to additional, because literally it's just attribute and faction. That is kind of bad, especially since, oh, all she has in her, um, faction is, like, mostly physical agents and, and one electric one. You have Billy, Nakamata, and Anbi. Yeah, not really a great selection right there, but she does have Shuyun, who is really, really good, and guess who Shuyun syncs up with? Yeah, Ching Yi. So, she has pretty, pretty great options when it comes to that. She also has Jane. Yep, Jane is pretty, pretty good. Um, pretty great for, uh, well, Anomaly teams. And guess what she is great at? Anomaly buildup. So, yeah, it's extremely, extremely good that she is able to sync up with uh, Shuiyun. 
Um, but again, as I said before, she doesn't really need additional, so you can literally just run her on whatever you want. Yeah, that's basically it. So Kaku is in the similar boat for um, uh, the coal, and that is because her uh, faction uh, right here, which is uh, Section 6, doesn't exist! There's no of section 6 characters in the game. Um, Yanagi isn't out yet, so we, we can't really pair her up with Yanagi. So, what does she have? She literally has two agents to go off of, Ellen and Lycon, which are both in um, Victoria Housekeeping, and that only leaves you with uh, Corin and then Reyna. That's it. That's that's all you have. Um, you also have Ching Yi, thanks to um, Ellen. And you also have Caesar, which is pretty great as well, um, since uh, Caesar um, is, uh, well, her additional is literally just defensive assist. Guess what Sokaku is? She's a defensive assist character. Um, as for uh, Chingyi, uh, she pairs up with Ellen since she's an attack, and she's Isa pairs up with Sokaku. So yeah, um, in general, they are pretty, pretty good. Um, you could just sync up with basically anyone with these support agents, but... Um, I guess I could just give you the uh, condensed version right here as to why they are placed they, where they are right now. So, at uh, number 9, Lucy, um, that is because uh, she only gives 600 uh, attack to all party members, and that's basically it. Um, Nicole has a 1-up edge on her at um, number 8, and that is because uh, Nicole literally just has crowd control, and she is great at quick swap support. Um, and, uh, that's basically it. And as for, uh, Sokaku, she gives 1k, which is more than, um, these two combined. Um, and she also, uh, gives you a lot of utility with the, uh, anomaly, uh, build up. And as well as semi-crowd control with her chain. Um, the only downsides, uh, I guess, uh, for all of these agents are for her downside right here. Um, she really doesn't have one, but, uh, she is only just giving 600 attack. That is, I guess, kind of her downside. Um, for Nicole's downside, she has to be played in a quick swap matter. So this means that you have to have her on field somewhat most of the time. So yeah, and as for Sokaku's, slow. Really, really slow. So yeah, um, that is basically it for, uh, all the supports right there. Um, hopefully my reasons are enough to, uh, justify their placings, so yeah. But, uh, that's basically it right there. Us, uh, Lucy, Nicole, and Sokaku, both, all three in those positions, so yeah. As for the number six spot, um, well, there's only, really only one agent right there, so yeah, well, uh, let's just, uh, talk about it. So at number six, we have... The Victoria housekeeping boss, um, Lycon, yeah, but Von, Von Lycon, yeah. So, uh, Lycon, he is really, really good, and I mean it, he's extremely, and I mean extremely good. So, um, he is a stun agent. Stun agents in the game are really, really busted, um, especially since it is a way for, um, you to do the most damage on an enemy. And that is because of stun damage multipliers. Um, the base stun damage multiplier for any um, enemy is 150. But Lycon right here will basically buff that up like crazy. So um, what do I mean by that? It is his additional. His additional is busted. So um, not only on his core, he literally gives you right here... 80% days on basics, which is what he does all the time. Um, he also has impact increase, which is pretty great. It means that you are able to stun the enemy faster. Um, he also has the 35% multiplier increase on stun damage enemies. So basically, your uh, stun damage multiplier goes from 150 to 185. That is really, really busted. Also, he gives ice res shred on EX, meaning that if he is on an ice team, he's able to just do a bunch of ice damage, him and his teammates. So yeah, it's really, really, really busted. Lycon right here is just a definition of just a really, really good agent. Um, he is pretty, pretty fast when it comes to just dazing the enemy. Um, he also has pretty great utility as well. Um, thanks to the 80% days, it means that he's just going to be doing a faster ice res shred as well as stun damage multiplier bonus. And all he has to do is literally just attack in a chain. That's it. That's all you got to do. 
either that or you just attack with him like normally so yeah um really really great as for the teams that he has he is pretty great in general when it comes to teams but that's also his weakness he has no teams <laughs> um what i mean by that is he does have somewhat teams he has the ice team which is really really busted so ln sokaku lycon but he also has victoria housekeeping um with corin right here and reyna um which also leads you up to other opportunities like uh corin can lead up to um billy or um you can also lead up to other physical agents like piper which is pretty pretty great so um yeah as for reyna she has electric so you can lead you up to um basically someone like grace right here um you can also lead up to someone similar to maybe like seth or something so yeah um basically uh lycon right here is just really really limited to teams and that's because he is mainly strictly towards his ice team because of the ice red shred that is base kit by the way um but uh, at the same time he doesn't really need it but if you do run him on a nine ice team um expect to see a fall off on um his uh support capabilities but other than that um the 80 percent days on basic attacks should just carry you enough and as well as the um uh, stun damage multiplier but um that is literally one of the only downsides i could think of for lycon because he's extremely good he's literally the best standard uh banner agent in the game he's just really 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 good um as i said before the only downside is that his teams are somewhat limited um i guess if you are going to be running a universal standard team you can't just run lycon reyna that literally solves most of your problems but um other than that uh he really doesn't have any um, you probably only mostly see him in the ice team, and that is because of his ice res shred. So, yeah, that's basically it. Um, as for his, um, other things, if you are gonna be running, um, DPS Lycon, you can run other agents, surprisingly, like Caesar. Caesar is pretty great with them. So, yeah, you can literally just have a shield, and then you can just, um, get some supports in. He also is pretty great with uh, Sokaku. Sokaku is really, really good as well, especially if you are just going to be running a main DPS Lycon. So yeah, um, he has pretty great options as well, but that's basically it. Um, that's the reason why Lycon is where he is right now um, at number six. Uh, he just has limited team options. I'm pretty sure that will probably be fixed as soon as there's going to be more Ice Agents in the game. So yeah, um, she probably might be bumped up on the list in the future especially uh since we're going to be having the yabi maybe releasing um somewhat later on in the game's lifespan so yeah um that is uh lycon at number six so at number five and four oh boy um this is going to be really 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 interesting so at number five and four um they are basically two agents that are the same but um i rank them where they are and you'll see why so at number five we have the officer um officer of pupsec which is shuyun and then we also have at number four the shark made thyron ellen joe so um as for these agents right here they basically fill in the same role they are both attack agents that's it they do the same thing they just attack um, and that's basically it. It's the, uh, I guess it's just similar to, uh, Lucy, um, Nicole, and Sokaku. All three of them just support. Uh, that is what their role is. For these two, it's similar. They just attack. That's it. So, um, what makes them really, really, really good? Shuiyun does burst damage on quick swap. Yep. Um, she does way too much damage for her own good literally gets a 80 percent increase as long as the enemy is stunned guess what you're going to be pairing her up with ching yi yeah so you basically have a lot of good good options when it comes to that even if you don't have ching yi you have a free-to-play option you have anbi anbi is pretty good with her as well um her additional ability is also pretty good too pretty easy to get overall all you need is a support character or the same faction so you can just run ching yi you can run um jane or seth or you could just run someone like Lucy, 
Nicole, Sokaku, basically anyone who could just be um really really great with her is just well it just benefits her so much, um especially um for the support agents, and um especially her best partner Nicole, which is a free to play. So yeah, um as for the um other things that she has. She has pretty, pretty great damage overall on her basic attacks. She also has pretty great damage on her EX and ultimate. Those things hit really, really hard. And um, also, uh, the bullets that she has are just extremely, extremely, extremely good um, as well. Um, she probably might um, run out of bullets, but you still have ways to get them back, like the um, assists. You can just use um, assists. You can use basic attacks. You can use EX. She has ways to get her bullets back, so she's not going to be running out per se, unless like you are really in a dire situation. So yeah, um, Shuyun not really. Um, she's not really as um, well dead, I guess, with uh, bullets than um, others uh, say. You just have to basically play her correctly, just like uh, well a certain um, leader of uh, the. Um, gentle house but um she is played as a quick swap and what i mean by that is you literally uh just have to uh, switch between a lot of agents um especially since she is going to be running with nicole you're going to be sw swapping with them a lot and i mean a lot a lot so yeah um as for her teams right here um Shuyun has pretty pretty great teams as i mentioned before um, her additional is really, really, really good, especially since you're going to be getting the crit rate increase um, after using a EX chain or ult, which is really, really, really common. Um, since you're going to be doing that, um, you have a lot of options here. As I mentioned before, you have a pub sec, you have supports like Reyna, and then um, the other three as well, the three free to plays. Um, so yeah, uh, Shuyan has really, really, really good team options. What are her weaknesses? Well, as I mentioned before, if she runs out of bullets, she is literally a sitting duck. So yeah, um, that is uh, one of the weaknesses. She's also harder to play compared to her, um, well, the character that is above her, um, which is also the reason why I ranked her to where she is. She's harder to play than Ellen is because Ellen is more comfortable to play than Shuyun. Shuyun, you have to watch out for your bullets. You just have to. Because if you run out, then you're screwed. So you have to basically find a way to fill them up and be creative about it. Um, which is uh, where all of these come in. Her basic attacks, her assists, her EX and her chains and her ultimates. They all give bullets. If you know how to play her correctly, and if you know how to swap, um, you could literally basically just get infinite bullets. That's really, really, really good. But as I mentioned before, she's hard to play. So yeah, um, she's harder to play than Ellen. But she is just really, really, really good in general. Um, but, uh, well, basically due to the fact that she is kind of harder to play than Ellen, I had to rank her below her. So, yeah, uh, that is where uh, Shuyun stands right now. As for Ellen, um, Ellen is basically like your bare bones um, ice agent. Yeah, it's just your bare bones attack ice agent. What do you mean by that? Is she's literally one of the easiest agents to play in the game. All you have to do is literally get um, stacks right here. You just need flash freeze stacks to just do um, flash freeze damage on normal attacks. That's it. Um, her core is really, really good, especially since it just gives her 100% crit damage. It scales off of your basic crit damage as well. So the more crit damage you have, the more damage you're able to do, which is really, really busted in general. She also wants to get her additional ability as well because you get increased ice damage. This means that you're forced to run her or at least somewhat run her on ice teams. So, uh, well, you have a bunch of options for teams in general. Um, for Ellen, you have Chingy, who is really, really great stun. You have Sokaku, who is her best partner because she is a ice support. You have Lycon, who is pretty great on the stun spectrum. But um, just like Lycon, and uh well similar to ellen they share the same type and they share the same additional ability condition which means that they have no teams yep just like similar to lycon that is her main weakness despite having a lot of damage potential and doing a lot of damage she has no teams literally no teams um just like lycon you can sync up with her with basically unique teams and make her work it's just that she can't get like the other stuff in general um 
like, let's say, Bernice or Grace. She doesn't have easy access to that because, well, um, again, she is ICE and she is Victoria Housekeeping. But she can stick up with agents, um, just like similar to Lycon, who are unique to, um, well, basically with their additionals. So like, let's say, Caesar, who has a defensive assist um, link up. Ellen has defensive assist. And same with Chingy. Chingy is attack. Ellen is attack. So she does have ways to sync up with those types of agents. Um, but the only problem is, um, as I mentioned before, she wants her additional ability. So um, she has to be paired up with at least one ice agent. And guess what that ice agent is? It's either going to be Sokaku or Lycon. Yeah. So um, that is the reason why um, Ellen uh, well, has downsides compared to the uh, other top two that I'm going to be... Um, talking about but uh that is basically her main downsides when it comes to that but but um since that she is easier to play than shuyan shuyan you have to watch out for bullets all you have to do for lot um ellen is literally just do flash freeze trimming and that's it yeah that's it that's all you gotta do um it's really really easy she can have up to six and all you have to do is to refill it is literally just do a dash attack that's it for Shuyun, you have to go through hoops and hurdles. You have to do basically four or five hits of her normal attack. You have to do um, dodge assists. You have to do EXs and the chains. For uh, Ellen, all you have to do is literally just do charge attack on dash attack. That's it. She also has ways to get um, flash freeze as well for free. She can just do EX as well, which also combos into her third basic. So yeah. But um, that is where they stand right now. They're both basically the same thing. I would say they rank the same. You could literally just swap them anytime. Similar to the um, supports that I mentioned before. They could be swapped at um, basically any place. But um, again, as I said before, this is just my opinion. It's, it's my biased opinion. But yeah. Um, both of them are really, really good in general. It's just that I rank Ellen above Shuyan. Um, That's because uh, Ellen is just much easier to play than Shuyan. That's basically it. So yeah. And now, we're moving on to the top four. Oh boy, here we go. So, um, as I mentioned before, Anomaly is the uh, meta of the game. So, uh, you can probably guess where uh, the number two and three spot are going to be. So, well, let's just talk about it. At number three, we have the mixer of the Sons of Caledon, as well as the bartender, Bernice White. And we have, at number two, the secret agent of PubSec, Jane Doe. Yep, these two are basically number two and three on the list. They are just that, and I mean that, busted. So yeah. Well, let's talk about it. So, uh, what makes Bernice and Jane so good? They're anomaly agents. Anomaly right now is the meta of the game because... You literally just do a bunch of nuke damage on the enemy, and that's basically it. Um, more um, on the emphasis on nuke damage to Jane. Jane literally carries the anomaly teams um, that I mentioned before, because just of how much damage she's able to do. Same with Bernice. Bernice is uh, really, really good in general as well. So, uh, I know she just released, but I I I'm not joking. She's just really, really good. Uh, let's just talk about uh, these two. So, first off, Bernice. Bernice is really, really busted. She is basically, if I have to describe her in one sentence, off-field fire sub-DPS. Yep. So, um, what she does is literally all you have to do is just get enough heat. Um, just do a charge attack or EX or basically an ultimate. Um, she will decrease heat. And that basically just does damage to the enemy. Depending on how much attack and AP you have, you're going to be doing a bajillion damage to the enemy um, off field. You literally, at core level um, 7, you literally do 350% of Bernice's attack with 30% afterburn for every 10 AP. Which means that um, all you need is 300 AP and that's it. She just becomes really, really good right off the bat. She also has um, stuff that could help her to get... Uh, to her EX. She has energy regen on core. This is really, really busted. It means that she's able to just consistently get her EX really, really fast. You don't even need a W engine with energy regen or a disc with energy regen. She's just that good. This means that you're able to just fill in other slots like um, AM or Anomaly Mastery with her. Um, she is also pretty great 
as well, um, considering damage. Her EX hits super hard, um, especially since you are just going to be doing continuous fire damage. You can also do double shot, which is the quickest way to get her heat back, which is really, really nice. And she gets it after literally just doing a chain. You're going to be doing this a lot, by the way. Um, you can also double tap, um, double tap EX, which literally gets you double shot. She has so many ways to get into double shot. It's just really, really, really insane. Her charge basic is pretty, pretty good as well. Um, it also gets her to double shot. Um, basically, uh, your main goal for Bernice is just to, uh, um, apply the afterburner state on the enemy. That's all you have to do. Literally. You just have to basically, um, hit the enemy, um, until they're scorched. So basically, all you have to do right here, they literally tell you do the charge basics, the EX, chain, or ultimate. That's all you have to do. Once you do that, the enemies burn. And the only thing you have to do now is just keep up your flame stacks or your heat stacks right here. Um, which is basically done by using EX and ult. Ult literally gives you 50 heat. So yeah. Um, Bernice is really, really great off field. Um, she has, uh, well, her set mainly is going to be doing a bunch of damage to the enemy. Um, she also will be triggering burn a lot since after burn literally lasts forever as long as you have heat stacks. That's literally it. Um, so this means that you can literally pair her up with any anomaly agent and she is the core of the disorder team. Yep. She literally makes the disorder teams work because of just how much damage she's able to do, which means that. Um, since her additional ability, which is what you want most of the time anyway, because it literally gives you 65% anomaly buildup for fire agents, um, and for herself as well, for the enemy, um, you literally, all you have to do is just get anomaly or the same faction. This means that she has stuff like Jane. Yeah, Jane. Grace. She has other stuff too, like Piper, who is also in her team. Yeah. All of these ages are really, really good with Bernice, especially since she's going to be doing damage off field. This means that all the agents that I mentioned before, um, they don't need to fight for on field screen time. Bernice can literally just sit off field and just do whatever you want. For Jane, mostly, she wants to be on field all the time, especially since all the physical hits will just do a lot of anomaly buildup, especially in her, um, well, in her state, her uh, passion state. Um, for Grace, she wants to be doing normal so she can, is able to do her um, grenade attacks. For Piper, literally, she just has to use her EX and that's basically it. But Bernice right here literally enables all of them to just be on field at all times. It's She's just really, really that good. Um, and since she's that good, you can literally uh, pair her up with other um, agents besides Anomaly. You can pair her up with attack agents as well, like Eleven. Eleven is pretty good with Bernice. You can also pair her up with other attack agents that can just basically combo with her as well, like Nekomata. Nekomata is really good as well. So yeah, um, she has multiple ways to just sync up with um, a lot of agents. And she also is um, part of Sense of Kalon, which means that she has um, access to Lucy and Caesar, which is really, really, really great in general. So yeah, um, as for the uh, reason why um, she... Uh, isn't ranked up uh, higher than Jane. That's because Jane does more than Bernice, and you'll see what I mean. Um, but literally, the downsides to them is that they have no downsides. Yep. So the uh, cutoff point for no downsides is literally Bernice. Bernice literally just has no downsides. The only nitpick that I could probably tell you about Bernice is that she needs to do EX somewhat, but that is solved again thanks to her energy regen. So yeah, literally, she just has no downsides. So yeah. But um, as for Jane, well, the reason why Jane is better than Bernice, um, I'll just talk about Jane first, is because Jane just does so much things more than Bernice is. Bernice is literally just a sub DPS um, off field damage dealer. For Jane, literally, she does everything. She is a DPS, but she literally does everything that she uh, ever wants. And there's literally like no downside to her because of just how good she is. So um, what I mean by that, well, uh, let's just talk about it. So, Jane. Um, Jane is the only agent in the game that could crit off of Anomaly. Yeah, reliably, by the way. Um, I have to talk about that. Reliably. You can literally run um, AP and attack 
and she crits all the time. That that's basically it. For other agents, if you want to have her, um, if you want to have them crit, you basically just have to give them crit crit damage, and you're sacrificing AP for that. So yeah, um, for Jane, literally, you don't need to give her crit crit damage, and she's basically easy to build. That's it. Um, she also has guaranteed crits, especially if you have a high AP. She has increased anomaly buildup. In Passion State, she also has increased anomaly buildup. And all of her kit right here, her dodge, her EX, her chain, and her ult, all have anomaly buildup. This means that Jane is the fastest anomaly buildup agent in the game. Um, that is the reason why she is better than Bernice. Bernice, um, despite being really, really, really good, she can't, um, she can't build up anomaly as fast as this rat thyron. This rat thyron is unrivaled. Literally, I can literally talk about it. So, right here, 20%, 15%, and passion state literally gives her more stuff. She literally gets a lot of of anomaly build up 25% right there literally really 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 easy to get it's just really really busted in general of course if you have am she's going to be um getting anomaly build up even faster than before yeah it's really 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 good oh and um well her literal uh level up stat is am 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 everywhere so this means that uh jane's just gonna be triggering a lot of crit assaults yep um she also is the highest damage dealer in the entire game um, since she is going to be doing a lot of anomaly buildups all the time. This means that you're going to be triggering assault, 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 assault all the time. It's just so, so busted. It's super, super busted. The only downside, I guess, um, the nitpick I would give her is that, um, if you are not in passion state, she builds up slower. But it's so easy to get into passion state anyway. Which is really, 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 and I mean really easy. Perfect dodge, defensive assist. Guess what you're going to be doing a lot? You're going to be doing a lot of perfect dodges. This is really, really easy to get. This means that Jane is just able to get past the state basically reliably all the time. And also, um, even if you are going to be running out, you have Shell Chill Jump. Shell Chill Jump literally refills your passion meter by half. Yeah. Really nothing really to say there. So uh, Jane just could uh, just triggers a lot of anomaly consistently. And she also just does so much more damage um, compared to Bernice. But Bernice is just really, really, really damaging thanks to her off-fieldness. And uh, Jane is basically just really, really good thanks to her crit um, assaults. I would say both of these agents are really, really similar. But if I had to pick one above the other, which is really, really hard, by the way, I had to think of all of these agents um, to rank because they are really, really hard to rank individually. Um, I would say that Jane is just mostly better in slightly every way just because of just how much damage she's able to do. And, well, literally, you could just solo the game with her. Yeah, it's just that easy. So, yeah. Um, that is uh, the uh, number... Um, the number two and three slot right there, um, Jay and Doe and basically Bernice. Um, both of them are really, really good. Again, I will just keep repeating myself over and over again. Both of them are just extremely, extremely good. They're super, super, super busted. Um, it's just that, well, um, they're just really, really hard to rank in general because they just do similar things. But, um... The reason why I just rank Jane above Bernice is just that she just does more damage and she um, reliably can just get more anomaly build up. So yeah. As for 1 and 0, um, I'm pretty sure everyone will probably agree with me in 1 and 0 because of just how much they are just so broken in general. Well, I would rank them the same, but again, this is um, a condensed or basically a bot, um, a, uh, accurate or i would say in my opinion um precise precise tier list there you go that's the word so um in this precise tier list well i would rank these two um literally the same but again as i said before this is a precise tier list so at number one we have the automaton robot that is 500 years old chingy and at number zero as the best agent in the game. Literally, there's no surprises. It's it's the leader of the Sons of Caledon, Caesar. So, uh, both of these agents are literally at the top spot. 
Um, well, you probably might know the reason why they are. And I mentioned before, um, all the time, um, if you are uh, paying attention, both of these agents have something that the that all the other agents don't have. Flexibility. They have flexibility over every single other agent in the game. They have flexibility. For Qingyi, attack agent. That literally gives you access to every single attack agent in the game. Ellen, Shui Yun, Corin, Anton, <laughs> Billy, Nekomata, Eleven. You have all access to that. That is really, really, really busted. It means that Ching Yi can basically work on any team that she ever wants. All you have to do, literally, for the attack agent is to just complete their additional condition, and that's it. You can literally just run Ching Yi on basically any team you want, um, especially um, if you do have an attack agent. It's super, super, super busted that uh, she is able to just work on any team. And um, she also has stun. She is a stunner. She is also the fastest stunner in the game. Literally, you get so much stun thanks to her additional ability. You literally get 20% increased days. Um, you also get more days, especially since you're going to be um, increasing your flash connect to basically over 75. It means that you're just going to be doing more days. Moonlight Blossom does heavy days damage. And also... Her core literally gives her stun damage multiplier. She has the highest stun damage multiplier in the entire game. She has the highest stun damage multiplier. That is insane. That is insane. That That's dumb. That's super, super dumb. 80% stun damage multiplier. Yeah, no, nothing to be said right there. Literally super, 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 super busted. This means that you can literally just nuke the enemy down and that's it. That, that's that's all that Ching is able to do and um, that's all she ever needs to do She's just really 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 busted when it comes to uh, stun damage 80% not even Lycon can hit that Lycon literally only gives you 35 Ching Yi gives you 80 80 80 stun damage multiplier that is dumb that is super 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 dumb and also um, since you are going to be doing Flash Connect into Moonlit Blossom, she is the fastest stun agent in the game. You literally can stun enemies in literally like 5 seconds. That, that's how quick she is. She's just super, 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 super busted. So yeah. And as for her um, other competition, uh, Caesar. Caesar. Um, the reason why, uh, well, as I mentioned uh, before, all of these great things about Ching Yi... Um, the reason why she is better than uh, Ching Yi is because she has more characters that can be added to her team. Yeah, that's literally the only reason why C uh, Caesar is better than Ching Yi. Both of them are literally the same when it comes to support capabilities as well as um, helping their teammates. They learn literally the same thing. But Caesar has the edge out for um, Ching Yi, and that is because her additional ability is simply better. So yeah. Um, she literally, uh, gets her, uh, additional ability from defensive assist characters or the same faction. This means that, um, well, as for Ching Yi, she gets all the attack agents, uh, Shui Yan, Jane, and Seth, which also leads to other, um, characters as well. Don't get me wrong. It's really, really good. Caesar has defensive assist. This means that she gets characters like Ellen, Ching Yi, Jane, Sokaku, Lycon, Nicole, Bernice, Corin, Lucy, Seth, Piper, Anton, Anby, Ben, Nakomata, Eleven, Kaleida. Yep, all of those agents right there that I just mentioned. She gets all of those. All of those. So this means that, again, as I mentioned before with Chingy, all you have to do is just get their other additionals and then you can literally have a three out of three team. That's it's so easy. So this means that Caesar, similar to Ching Yi, can fit into every team in the game. It, it's just really, really busted. Um, that's not all because um, I didn't talk about why she's good. She has shield. Yep, this means that your agents won't die. She also has 1000 attack. Remember when I said that Sokaku has 1000 attack and there's another agent that can give 1000 attack? Caesar is that other agent. Yeah, this means that Sokaku becomes irrelevant. She becomes super irrelevant. Because, uh... 
Caesar does the same thing with a shield. Yeah, th that's basically it. But that's not all. Um, since you are going to be building her with high impact anyway, um, thanks to her shield um, scaling off of impact, this means that she is a pseudo stunner. Yeah, she's a pseudo stunner. This means that, uh, well, if you do EXs or defensive assists, you're going to be doing a lot of daze damage, which is pretty great. It means that you don't need a stunner at that point. Um, she also has, with her additional ability, which um, you're going to be getting anyway, since um, all she has to do is get defensive assists um, characters, you literally get 25% increased damage to all enemies. Yeah. This means that she's also a support as well. So she is a debuffer and a support. Similar to Ching Yi who debuffs the enemy with 80% um, of stun damage multiplier. Caesar basically does the same thing. And since Caesar, um, basically all she has to do is just pull up a shield and that's basically it. And just do a defensive assist. Literally, um, one of the easiest agents to play in the game. Same with Ching Yi. Both of these agents are just really, really easy. But... Because Caesar just has the um, ability to just get anyone she wants, mostly, um, compared to Ching Yi, where all she can get is just attack agents, Caesar just ekes it out for being the best agent in the game. Both of these agents are extremely good. They both give buffs, they both give debuffs, um, they both help the uh, party in every which way. They're just really, 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 really busted in general. Um, for Ching Yi, She's the best agent for Shiyu Defense Critical Node. Um, and a uh, node, basically, where it's all about speed. Ching Yi, as I mentioned before, is the fastest stunner in the entire game. This means that, well, she benefits it a lot because you need to stun the enemy fast so you're able to do a ton of damage. Caesar is the best ambush node uh, agent in the entire game. Shield is everything in ambush node and also, uh, well, living because uh, there is no time limit. So you can literally just do as much as you want um, without dying. Uh, Caesar basically helps you with that. You literally don't die if you have Caesar. It's just really, really that broken. And all you need is literally EX or chain or ultimate. That's it. That's all you need. And you are basically living all the time. So yeah. Um, so both of these agents are just really, 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 really busted. But I would say um, confidently that Caesar is the best agent in the game. So, yeah. And, well, I guess I can just go over the recap um, right now. Um, as I mentioned before, um, all these agents are really, really close to each other. Um, it really is hard for me to just uh, rank them individually. So, yeah. But um, uh, as for my uh, unbiased opinion, I would say all these three are equal. These two are equal. These two are equal. These two are equal. Yeah. So, basically, if you want to see an accurate version, it's probably like this. Yeah, that's the accurate version. But um, since um, I am doing this unbiased, it's basically just like, uh, well, not unbiased, but uh, biased a tier list with um, my opinions. Um, yeah, this is what it looks like. So I'll just go over the um, agents again. Ombro mentions, they can't really make it up the list again. Um, that's because all these agents are just really, really good. Grace, Eleven, Kaleida, all three of them are really, really good. It's just that they're not as good as the uh, top nine. Lucy, Really, really great. Um, loses to uh, Nicole thanks to Nicole being just really, really good on um, quick swap as well as just crowd control in general, which Lucy does not have. So Kaku has crowd control just like Nicole, but she also has 1k attack, which Nicole can't give and Lucy can't give. So that's why they uh, she ekes out them. For Lycon, he's just a solid stunner. Really nothing really to say. Um, his only weakness is that he just doesn't have that many teams. Shuiyun um, is really, really great uh, attack. Uh, DPS. The only problem with uh, her is that she is um, harder to play than Ellen, which is easier to play. But she does have teams over Ellen. Um, the reason why Ellen is better than Shuyan, in my opinion, is because um, Ellen is easier to play. But just like Glycon, she has um, downsides to her teams. For the top four, they have no downsides on teams. They're just really, really good in general um, when it comes to team options um, compared to uh, these. So, uh, Bernice is really, really good off-field, but um, the reason why Jane is better is because Jane just has more anomaly buildup and as well as more damage than Bernice. Um, and as for Jane, Jane's just uh, crit damage um, assaults, and she's just really, 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 really great.
great at um, just attacking the enemy relentlessly in general. So yeah. And as for 1 and 0, Ching Yi, Caesar. Ching Yi is just really, really good stun. Um, fastest stunner in the game. Yep, um, that's basically it. Uh, Caesar has more team options than Ching Yi, which is why uh, she is at number 0. She's also a pseudo stunner, as well as a uh, debuffer and buffer with her shield. Um, and she also gives 1k attack just like uh, Sokaku. So yeah, that's basically it. And that is it for the tier list. So um, you can uh, take a good look one last time right there. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and number 0. So there you go. And that is basically it for this Halloween Let's Say video. So uh, yeah, scary, right? Um, these agents right here, they're spooky um, placings. Um, so yeah, again, as I said before, this is just my opinion. Again, if you are um, upset about um, any of the placements or if you just want to make your own tier list, again, um, I will link the uh, tier list that I made in the description down below. You can also talk about it in the comments down below. I will be trying to um, reply to you guys as well, since this is going to be more of a controversial list since this is a basically a biased and um, precise tier list. So yeah, um, but anyways... I hope you guys enjoyed the tier list regardless. If you want to see uh, more content on this channel, um, be sure to support it by leaving a like and subscribing. It really does mean a lot if you do support the channel. It helps me keep you made it, um, motivated and making more videos, as well as pop out content for you guys. So again, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here. So again, thank you so much for supporting the channel. And as for the comments, as I mentioned before, what do you think about the tier list? You think it's accurate? You think it's not? Who would you swap out and who would you not? Um, what would be your top 10 agents in the game? Um, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to see all of your comments. Um, this is going to be a great discussion to uh, talk about. So yeah. And as always, thank you guys for watching this, uh, let's say, tier list video. And I'll see you guys in the next gotcha video.